Hey everyone, welcome back to Bio in a Bottle. Today we're going to go over both topic 2.5 and 2.6, membrane permeability and membrane transport. The cell membrane acts as a barrier between the cell surroundings and what's inside the cell. Think of it as a wall that has some entrances to let molecules into and out of the cell. Because the cell membrane has this ability to select which molecules come into and out of the cell, we call it semi-permeable. The molecules that are going to be able to freely pass the cell membrane without any assistance are going to be gases, such as O2 and CO2. These molecules are able to pass through fast because they are small and they are non-polar. However, when a molecule is small but also polar, such as water, it is going to pass through in small amounts and more slowly compared to small and non-polar molecules. However, how are large polar molecules going to pass through? Well, they pass through through the use of channel proteins and transport proteins which exists within the cell membrane. This is also how ions pass through. The movement of molecules across membranes also depends on the concentration gradient, in which molecules will move from a high concentration to a low concentration. When molecules move across their concentration gradient, it is called a passive transport, which is a way many molecules are imported and waste within a cell is exported. Active transport, on the other hand, is the opposite of passive transport when molecules move against their concentration gradient, this time from a low concentration to a high concentration. However, in order to do this, it is going to need some extra energy in the form of ATP, in which ATP allows for active transport to take place. Active transport also takes place with the help of proteins embedded within the plasma membrane. Because a bunch of proteins, steroids, glycoproteins, and glycolipids are embedded within the cell membrane, it is said that the cell membrane has a fluid mosaic model, as there are a mixture of items within the membrane, and it is fluid because these components do not stay in place, and they actually move around in different directions. Another way molecules get across the plasma membrane is through the process of endocytosis and exocytosis. As I mentioned within our cell structure video, vesicles play a major role in the transport of molecules. Within endocytosis, molecules will enter the cell from an external environment. In order to do this, they will form vesicles from the outside of the cell membrane. And once the vesicle is formed, they will reach the cytoplasm and be inside the cell. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is when molecules will exit the cell. The molecules will reach the plasma membrane in a vesicle. And this time, once the vesicle reaches the plasma membrane, it will fuse with it, releasing the molecules into an external environment. A plasma membrane isn't the only structure that facilitates how molecules enter and exit. exit. Some cells, such as plant cells, will also have a cell wall in addition to the plasma membrane. Although it is called a wall, and it may seem like nothing can get past it, it is actually permeable as well, meaning things can move past it. Cell walls are composed of carbohydrates, such as cellulose, in which you can see the cellulose can still allow molecules to move past it. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and make sure to like this video and subscribe for more AP Biology content.